Well, hello, trail travelers. It is Carrie and Katerina and someone else today. You'll meet that person in just a moment, but, well, person, eh, we'll see. And we have Josh and Christina, and today they're not in the Rubistina, they're in their 4xE. So it's the first time the 4xE has gone wheeling. It doesn't have any skid plates yet, so we're trying to do something a little easier today just to kind of see what it's like to wheel it. And Optimus has just got out of the shop for a service four-wheel drive issue that has been plaguing us for a couple months. Hopefully it's now fixed. So this is kind of a shakedown run for that. So hopefully we'll get all this in place here and see how things are going. Now, in the meantime, I got someone for you to meet. All right. Pick him up. Pick him up. And this is the newest member of the Trail Traveler family. This is Lucas. He's our new Bernie Doodle, our new Jeep dog, and hopefully he's gonna do good on the trail today. We're all aired down. We're gonna go hit Devil's Canyon just outside of Idaho Springs. Now from the road here, you gotta keep your eyes peeled because it's a very sharp turn onto the trail. And you get started right away. Well, we just had one little patch of ice so far. Uh, today is, what is today? November 5th. So there is snow on the ground. We are probably going to have some patches of snow on the trail today. But as of trail, trails off road yesterday, it said it was wide open. And I don't suspect any problems uh, with what we're doing today. Nothing dangerous anyway. And there, it looks like there's been plenty of people through here since the last snow. So as, I mean, you may have got some of that, um, this is kind of a lollipop. You come in on one road and then you start a loop and you come back out on the same road. So most of Devil's Canyon is just a big loop. And once you get kind of up to the altitude, it's relatively flat. Uh, there's not a lot of big climbs and descents on it. And there's, there's not a lot of major obstacles either. There's just, uh, some ruts and things, and we'll have some pretty nice views as we go along. So it should be a pretty nice trail. All we need is just some rough surface to see if we get the four-wheel drive issue on Optimus. And they wanted something uh, pretty easy to uh, for Christina to be driving the four by you today. So I think this is gonna be the perfect trail today. And it's for snow wheeling of the season, and it's the first wheeling for Lucas. Yeah, we're on this the, kind of this back side here, so there's going to be more snow over here. But like I said, and you can see there's tire tracks in here. We're going to go into four low just so we have traction. And it's 50 degrees today, so we shouldn't run, uh, we shouldn't be getting ice problems today. It's gonna be fairly soft. We might slide around a little bit, but overall, shouldn't be that big of a deal. As you can see from all the naked trees here, this was probably a pretty nice looking trail uh, about a month ago when all the fall colors were hitting. Should have been really nice to come through here. Okay, there is an intersection here 
and I do believe we are going to go straight. We're not gonna go left. We stay to the right up here to continue on Devil's Canyon. Now, if you're doing this as a brand new person, uh, like Christina's driven off-road some, but she's gonna try and do this entire trail today. You should be in belly four low, just to make sure you've got plenty of uh, torque, and you should turn off your sway bar or disconnect your sway bar if you can just to make sure your vehicle has plenty of flex and articulation it'll make going over some of the big ruts a lot easier and you won't get as much body roll so there's my beginner tip for devil's canyon here otherwise we're just going to have a, a nice drive through the canyon <laughs> Okay, we've got a nice rutted area here, and you're probably gonna need to get in it a little bit, and you're gonna get a little tippy. Uh, not too bad, not anything dangerous for sure, but just a nice little bit of tippiness through this little section. Again, I think I'll continue to give some beginner tips on this trail. We're going downhill, and we are in the snow a little bit. So I did go ahead and put it in my manual gears and I'm using between manual one and manual two. That way I'm not hitting the brakes. I'm letting the engine slow down the vehicle. This is gonna prevent us from skidding. If I hit the brakes and I hit them a little too hard, we can end up locking up the tires and uh, sliding around on the snow. We want to continue to roll because as long as the tires are rolling, we have traction. So going into a low manual gear, and that's just moving the shifter to the left and pushing it up till you see manual one or manual two, and just letting the engine do the braking is going to keep a nice, slow, steady descent while keeping everything under control and not losing any traction. And you yeah, and we, we are aired down, which in a situation like this, you should be aired down. Uh, we are not running bead locks. We're just stock, or, you know, regular uh, style rims, and we're running about 12 PSI today. I think Josh and Christina went down to about 14 or 15. On their tires, I think they have 35s on that. Now, if you follow Trails Off-Road, which of course we highly recommend, you will see a couple of little pullouts where camping is allowed. So there's some existing campsites, should have fire rings and stuff for some nice camping. I don't know if you wanna be camping in the snow, but if you are, you can. But during the rest of the year, yeah, it's a really nice spots up here. Oh, it gets a little narrow. There's not a lot of camping. There's maybe uh, half a dozen, six or 10 campsites. So if you're gonna plan on doing that, you're gonna, you're gonna wanna come early and pick them up. That's kind of a tippy section through here. You're probably gonna be about a 15, 16 degree roll. I know that's a little uncomfortable for some people. At first, well, we got to 18. So yeah, if you're not comfortable doing some left to right roll angles, that may trip you out the first time you do that. But perfectly safe, nothing to worry about. 
on a section like this with this snow, main thing is keep the wheels moving. Don't stop, don't hesitate, just drive up it. Last thing you wanna do is stop on a hill like that, then you're gonna have some problems. Somebody is being an extremely good Jeep dog. I could not be happier with this experience here. Lucas is doing awesome. For a 10 week old puppy, 10 weeks yesterday, we've only had him for four days, five days, since Wednesday, today's Sunday. Uh, he is doing absolutely fantastic. I'm very happy that we're finally gonna have another Jeep dog. Well, and as I turn my eyes back to the road, we can see we're running out of tire tracks. Nobody has been up this hill before us in the snow. So we're gonna go out and take a look, see if it's safe to keep going. Well, we decided to give it a go and it's not that bad. The snow is not that deep, the tires are hitting some traction, and we're climbing up it without any real difficulty. But we are gonna keep some distance between us and Josh and Christina behind us, just in case. So when we get to a safe spot, we'll tell them it's okay for them to start their climb. Okay for me to come up. Stand by. You're good. <laughs> okay so we made it up that uh steep snowy patch um the the key on something like that is just don't hesitate once you have your momentum hold your momentum and just stay on it if you hit your brakes if you slow down you risk stalling out and now you've got some real serious problems. Just keep momentum going and you'll climb right up it. Now, fortunately, there were no other tire tracks, which meant it had never been compacted. So there was no ice underneath it either. It was just snow. So that was a big, you know, plus for us making it up there. And the four by E back there did great. Uh, it just performed super well. So. Everyone's happy with how things are performing, although I am now getting my service four-wheel drive error again, and it will be back in the shop for the fourth time trying to fix it this week. So sooner or later, we'll replace enough parts that we get it fixed. So far, so good coming down. We've had a little bit of snow coming out of this, but we still had plenty of traction. We still got, I think, the biggest one left to go, so we're not out of the woods yet, literally. <laughs> so we'll see how we go as we work our way down out of Devil's Canyon. And I think this is the worst spot here that we had coming up. You can see it's a steep descent with some big ruts and some snow. And there have been a number of vehicles that came up after us 
which means it can get compacted down and you can get a layer of ice. Ah, but no problem. We went through it pretty nicely. So no real issues there. And then this next turn is a pretty fun section. We got some nice ruts going on over here. The other one. You, that's what she says. Oh. <laughs> All right, I'm with Josh, and normally you have seen the Rubistina, which is a very, really coolly built Jeep. But today you're in your 4xe. Now right. it's not stock, right? No. What have you done to it? Um, two and a half inch rock crawler lift and some King 2.5 shocks. And what are we doing on tires? BFG 37 inch KO2s, which are really about 35 and a half. So it just basically your basic lift and shocks and tires, yep. right? Yep. Now on the trail today, how did it perform? Oh, great. Really good. Felt oh, great. Were you, were you ever in that full auto or full electric mode on the trail? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I was wondering if, the, if you were going to hit that and have it be totally silent out there. Honestly, I barely drove it. Christina drove it. That's true. That's true. She did. She drove we gotta, we're gonna have to ask like 99% of the trail, right? There was uh, only that one section up the hill with the ice that I drove. Now, it's, it's heavier than a standard 2.0, right? Because of the, the batteries and stuff. Yes, but to be quite honest with you, I really didn't feel it. You didn't feel it? No. Uh, so I was, I was really curious about that because I've never wheeled with somebody with a 4xe. Mm -hmm. You've never wheeled the 4xe before. Mm -hmm. And uh, so trying to get some impressions on what it's like to have that on the trail, from what I could see, it was performing perfectly. It did great. It did great. It really so, felt just like Rubicina did prior to us doing the long arms. Now, I will say in the past, you started with KO2s on Rubicina. And they always did good in the snow and stuff. So I, I fully expected that was still going to be the case on here. And it did. It, it did just fine. There were some really steep areas with some slippery stuff. And uh, I asked Christina if it was sliding. She's like, no, no, no not that she felt. So 4 by e is that a winner on the trail? It is, for sure. <laughs> and we, we know what's next, too. Stay tuned. Oh, is, there more, is there more coming on, on this? After today, probably. <laughs> After today. Well, it it's got to well. get. It did well. It really did well. And you want to get skid plates as a minimum. Uh, oh, for sure. Yeah, and some other things to beef it up, right? There's a few things. So, are we going to see it on the trail more often? Probably. All right. Well, let's look forward to that. Does it have a name? Four by eight. It's Rubicon. it's a four by eight. <laughs> Great. All right. Well, thanks, Josh. Thanks for watching, everybody. From all of us here, be safe out there. We'll see you on the trails. Later, guys.